Oh shit, I'm asexual. You might be a little bit confused, but so was I until I figured it out at the age of 37. So let's go back to the very beginning. I was a late bloomer. I didn't get my first kiss until I was 18 years old. And it was with a guy because I did not know why I was not attracted to boys. So I kind of forced myself into it. And when I turned 19, it was actually my first lesbian experience. It was both emotional and sexual. Now, I didn't know I was different because everything was so short back then. Everyone that I dated was literally under three months and I really wasn't sexually active. I started to notice that I was different the older I got because in my relationships, my partners would initiate the sex 90% of the time. And it's a bit confusing because my love language is actually quality time and physical touch. Kissing, hugging, cuddling, grabbing a little bit, you know, grabbing the boob a little bit, grabbing the ass a little bit. And when I would do those things, a lot of the times my partner would mistake it for I'm initiating sex, when in fact, that's not what I was going for. I just need to grab, I just need to touch. And it caused a lot of problems in my relationships understandably because sex is a big deal and it's very important in relationships so society has told me. But not all of us are that sexual. So I started to think, like, what's the problem here? What is wrong with me? Is it that I'm in my head a lot? It got so bad to the point where I was thinking, okay, I don't know what's going on, but in one of my relationships, I actually told my partner that you can go on ahead and fulfill your sexual needs with someone else because I cannot give it to you. It's crazy because I don't really think my partners believed a lot of the things that I said and everything that I said was honest. <laughs> it was true. And I cried a lot about it thinking like, what the fuck, you know, it's causing a lot of problems in my relationship and I just can't change myself. I can't force myself to give them what they want and need. After that happened, I thought to myself, hmm, the label asexuality came out more and more often. And I started to think, I'm like, is that what I am? But there's no way because I still do want sex and I still do enjoy it. So I can't be. So I pushed it out of my head and just thought something else is wrong with me. I'm 38 now, but at 37, I started to look into asexuality and realized there was a spectrum. It's not just not desiring or finding anyone sexually attractive. There's a spectrum to it. So shit, I'm asexual. There's a lot of labels out there and a lot of people don't like to use them. The reason why I'm okay with labels is because it helps me better understand who I am rather than being confused and thinking that I'm the only one that's like this. So when there's labels for it, I can pinpoint exactly who I am. So that's why I prefer it. So let's talk about it. What is asexual? Lack of sexual attraction to others or low or absent interest in or desire for sexual activity. For those that don't know, we are the A of the LGBTQAI plus community. A spec is actually short for being on the asexual spectrum. Now there's a lot of labels on the spectrum and I'm going to explain to you how I fall under a lot of them, not just one. Gray sexual, that's actually between asexual and sexual, the gray area. So it's pretty much having some sexual attraction. So the identities that I'm about to bring up can all follow under the gray sexual label. Cupid sexual, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, I might not be, but that's how I read it. <laughs> Now these are people who don't experience sexual attraction, but still desire to be in a sexual relationship or engage in sexual behavior. And sure enough, that's one that I fall under. I do want it. I just don't want it all the time, <laughs> but I do crave having that intimate relationship with my partner. To me, it just brings two people closer and it's passionate and it's intense and it's a good feeling to have. So I do want sex. And the times that I have been sexual, a lot of those times in my relationships or when I was dating, I did it just to please my partner and to give them what they need. It wasn't necessarily what I wanted at the time, but it's just to provide them with what a relationship 
needs to have. I also did it out of pressure because when someone just, just keeps pushing themselves on me and trying to be sexy for you and, dre and dressing in lingerie and putting in the effort, it's like shit, you know? That's a lot of work that they're putting into this just to get my attention and so I'm just gonna give them what they want to make them feel good. And then there's other times where I was just drunk <laughs> <laughs> and alcohol can just make you do some crazy decisions. I know that ain't crazy for y'all, but it was for me, okay? When I didn't want it, it's just in the moment, you're drunk, why the fuck not? Now mind you, the labels that I'm bringing up in this video is not all the labels on the spectrum. These are just the labels that I fall under. So you can have a better understanding of who I am and how I identify. So another label on that spectrum is demisexual, which is actually what I prefer to label myself as overall. So demisexuals are people who only feel sexual attraction to someone after they've formed a strong emotional bond with them. So basically, I can only find you sexually attractive if you and I are emotionally connected. The asexual community have a hard time accepting demisexuals as part of their community because they feel that it's a choice. Like, okay, I'm only gonna have sex with you if I have feelings with you, but I can have sex with you anytime, but I prefer not to, as if it's a decision that we can just easily make then and there, which is not the case. This is not a choice. I literally do not have a sexual desire for someone that I don't have an emotional bond with. I can look at someone and find them very physically attractive, beautiful human being, but I don't see them in a sexual manner. I know a lot of y'all can look at somebody and be like, damn, I wonder how they fuck. Or I would like to get in them jeans. Shit like that, I don't, I don't think that way. But once I get to know somebody and once I start to catch feelings, then as time passes, I do have that sexual desire. It's not a choice, it is literally what it is. While others who are not demisexual, it is a choice for them. Some people choose to have sex with only people that they wanna be in relationships with, but that's a choice that, they, that they're making. For example, everyone that I've dated and been in relationships with, I don't check them out up and down and see if they got an ass, how their boobs are, how their figures are. I literally don't check them out in that way. To me, it's like facial. And I later find out that they have an ass or they have some assets that I actually like until I'm physical with them. If that's hugging or cuddling, then that's when I get to notice a little bit of those things. I know it's different, y'all, but bear with me. And I know some of you might be confused by watching some of my videos and how I say like, that is sexy as fuck. When I use the word sexy, it's not in the way that you may use it. Some of you might use the word sexy as being sexual, whereas for me, it's just qualities of a woman the confidence of a woman, the independence of a woman, the mind of a woman is what I find to be sexy. So if I see a woman, for example, in lingerie, that shit is sexy as fuck. And I'm not looking at her in a sexual, in a sexual way. The fact that she's able to put on lingerie and be confident in it and to walk around like she's that bitch. That to me is sexy. Okay, now that we dabbled into that label, I know there was a lot in there. That's the label that I identify myself to be. We're gonna move on to the next one, which is Ace Spike. Ace Spike is someone who usually feels no sexual attraction, but occasionally feels intense sexual feelings for a short amount of time. I usually get into my Ace Spike area when it is the beginning of a relationship or at the beginning of a serious dating relationship. So my feelings are now there. I can now find this person sexually attractive and that's when I am the most sexual. Everything's new, we're learning each other's bodies, we're pleasing each other, and that is the time that I most enjoy myself. My partner gets to get the benefit of that. And this usually happens the first few months of the relationship. Now mind you, I've had three relationships. The first two were a year and a half, and the last one was my marriage, which was five years. So you can only imagine, the, fir the first two relationships, those first few months, sexually active. And in my marriage, I believe it was like the first year or two, sexually active. But after that period, it does die down slowly but surely. And sometimes, especially when we're having problems in the relationship and we're not getting along that well, it can literally spike up and spike down. <laughs> Even when there are no problems, my sexual desire just slowly 
fades away. And it has nothing to do with my partners. I want to make that clear because all of them have always believed that and they never believed me when I said it has nothing to do with them. It literally doesn't. And because the sexual relationship changes, it causes another problem in the relationship. And when that does die down, at this point, I'm not quite sure if I can get another spike in the relationship because it has never happened because my relationships have been so short, including my five-year marriage. Even though those two years were great, it slowly died down like maybe that third year. And then to the point where I just, we would just have sex maybe once every few months. And that was me literally just giving her what she needed and not really what I wanted. So I don't know if I can ever gain that spike in a relationship because I've never experienced it. And trust me, I am very well aware that it can be very hard for my partners. I understand their feelings. I understand why they can't really deal with that for the rest of their lives because a lot of them have had a high libido or just like your average person, you know, they're just needing that sex in a relationship. I get it. And it also sucks for me because I'm purposely not doing this. It's just who I am. And the last label that I fall under is Ace Flux. Ace Flux is someone whose sexuality fluctuates between asexual and sexual, but will stay within the asexual spectrum. Because I fall under all those labels that I've given you, four of those labels on the spectrum, I am ace flux. So the way I would present myself to someone that I'm interested in, I would say that I am asexual, because that is in general, but overall, I do identify myself as demisexual. For those who are more interested, I will specifically explain what I fall under. So where do I stand when it comes to dating? I'm hesitant. I've always dated someone one after the other, not lasting long, I mean, under three months. So a lot of the dating were people I was never sexual with, just getting to know them. Now that I know what I identify as and that there literally is nothing wrong with me, it's just who I am and that's okay. I am hesitant to date. I don't want a relationship right now, not interested. I've been single for three years now. I just don't have interest in getting to know someone on a serious level because number one, I'm not ready. I wanna be selfish right now and that's okay to be because I've never gotten that opportunity to, be, to do that. So now that I'm single, I can do whatever the hell I want, whenever the hell I want, wherever the hell I want without considering someone else's feelings. And I'm also hesitant because of the sexual part. I'm tired of hurting people's feelings by just being me. It's understandable why they feel the way they feel, but at the same time, it's not okay to beat myself down for it. And I really don't have the time or desire to explain things and I'm always trying to make them feel better about themselves and let them know that it's not them. Like, I just don't wanna deal with that shit. And then also just having to give in just because that's something that I need to provide when I don't want to. If I don't wanna fuck, I ain't gonna fuck. Not no more, like I'm done with that shit. It doesn't make me feel good. So moving forward after learning about myself, I can now have a better understanding of why I am the way that I am. So whenever I am ready to date, I know what to look for. Whenever I do catch feelings, cause it's really, honestly, it's really nobody's business what the fuck I am sexually. But once I catch feelings with someone, yes, that's when I'm going to let them know where I stand. I am no longer gonna be dating anybody with a high libido, okay? So if you love sex to the highest degree, you ain't for me. People have told me that maybe I should try dating another ace spec person. I never considered that before, but thinking about it, it might be something that I should try. At the same time with two asexuals, I feel like when are we gonna have sex then? <laughs> Because when you don't want it, but when I do, it's not going to happen. When you want it and when I don't, it's not going to happen. So where is it going to work? Because I still want it in some way, some form. Just not all the time. I don't know. It's going to be hard, but it is what it is. It's just who I am. And I understand completely that it's going to be hard to find my lifetime partner because of it. But I am a loving, passionate person. I am a great girlfriend, you can ask all my partners, and I'm very affectionate. Hopefully I can find my lifetime partner when that day comes, but if not, I will not settle, ain't got time for that shit. But thank you guys for watching this video, I hope you learned a lot. 
not just about me and who I am, but I hope you got educated on the asexual spectrum. There's a lot more labels in there, guys. You guys can just go ahead and look into it. And if you feel that you're asexual and this video somehow helped you understand yourself a little bit, I'm happy for that. But I would suggest that you go ahead and do your own research and really point out the labels that you believe you fit in. So thank you guys for watching and uh, I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.